Everyone has an opinion about how to fix the economy, but few have the perspective that Roger Altman has. He is the founder and co-chairman of Evercourt Partners, and before that he served as Deputy Treasury Secretary under Bill Clinton. He is joining us right here in the newsroom this morning. Roger, so glad to have you Happy with to be us. Here. If there is one piece of advice that you would give to the Obama administration right now about lending support to the U.S. recovery, what would it be? Well, first of all, I think they know what they would do in a perfect world if you could put politics aside. That would be an additional round of stimulus, short-term stimulus right now, coupled with... So this with, is without politics, as you say. Yes, putting aside the politics, coupled with... Um, a really serious deficit reduction program taking effect, say, in 18 months. Uh, the problem is uh, there isn't, apparently, uh, support in the Congress for any additional form of the type of stimulus which would work, namely high bang for the buck because it goes directly into the pockets of those people who most quickly spend it, namely lower and middle income Americans. Uh, and that could take a variety of different forms. It could take the form of tax rebates. It could take the form of... Uh, but some people say they didn't work so well the last time around, that people well, just paid that, off debt that they already had or they didn't spend it, they saved it. Well, I think that whole argument, uh, hey, the stimulus didn't work, uh, makes for good debate and good uh, sound bites, but it's, it's beside the point. Uh, the stimulus did work. Every single serious economic model, every one you could possibly find, shows that the stimulus added between one and three points of GDP uh, preserved or added uh, two to three million jobs, which otherwise would not, would not, would not exist. It, it, there's really no serious debate about the, whether the stimulus worked or didn't work in you, economic circles. Would you say now that the Obama administration's hands are tied? I think they are tied as far as additional short-term stimulus is concerned, and that's evident by the fact, or evidenced by the fact that the president doesn't want to even use the word of additional stimulus because it's taken on a charged connotation and a sense uh, of, of, of failure even though in fact it didn't fail. All right, so in a way if the administration can't help uh, the average American or the economy, what can it do to help the business community if we go with this trickle-down idea? I mean, you're a Lehman alum, you're a Blackstone alum, you founded your own company. What can the administration do to support business that in theory would create jobs? Well, the president about uh, two weeks ago uh, made a series of additional proposals which actually do constitute stimulus even though they weren't described as that. We all know one was to permit businesses beginning January 1, 2011 to write off capital expenditures made next year. In other words, immediately expense them. The second was the extension of the R&D tax credit and so forth. But what Those if companies are so worried about the future that they don't spend? Well, first of all, I think most businesses uh, like those two ideas, like the idea of expensing uh, uh, CapEx immediately and like the idea of uh, at least a lot of businesses for which it's relevant, an extended R&D tax credit. Uh, your question is a good one. Uh, the biggest overhang over the economy, in my judgment, is not uncertainty about regulation or legislation. That's, that, that's a factor. It's uncertainty about final demand. And I do spend a lot of my time talking to senior executives all around the world. That's my job. Uh, and they all talk about the uncertainty of, of final demand, much more so than they talk about the uncertainty of health care regulations or financial reform regulations. I won't say that's not a factor at all, but that's not the key factor. You say what is needed is more stimulus now. The Obama administration's hands are tied politically. But you feel, I feel like you're making the argument for more stimulus now and then maybe 18 months down the road a deficit reduction attack plan. Right. Uh, that's not likely to happen, as you mentioned, because Congress apparently doesn't want it. Let's tackle another subject that is somewhat aligned, and that's the tax cuts. I know you've said, as far as the Bush plan goes, your idea is to just let everybody off the hook for the next 18 months and then let all of the tax cuts expire in the next two years. Is that right? Well, that's one way to do it. Uh, uh, I, I actually think that uh, a better way to do it is is the, is is the way the president's suggesting it, and it fits into the conversation we just had. So, if one wanted to do additional stimulus, one way you would not do it is to extend tax cuts for people like me. Why? Because the proclivity to save among high earners yeah, is such that it doesn't get spent; it doesn't immediately impact the economy. 
So one thing we should try to be clear about is that the debate over extending the upper income tax cuts is not a debate about assisting the economy because that's a very low bang for the buck approach. Uh, so my own view is, and, and there are a lot of different ways to approach this, but my own view is it's probably best to uh, uh, extend all of the middle class tax cuts, although I would not make them permanent and preserve the right to cancel some of them if we need to for purposes of fiscal policy, but not extend the t top two brackets uh, and allow them to return to the Clinton rates of 39.6 and 36. During those Clinton years, uh, uh, we had the best economic performance in the United States in 40 years. We had 22 million new jobs. We had every single income category, in, uh, every single income quintile see big gains. We had all-time record in the stock market at, the, at a time when we had the, t the, up, the two upper rates, which the president is proposing to reinstall. So the argument that, wow, if you put those rates back up to 39.6 and 36, it's going to be uh, it's going to crush the economy. I just don't get it because it's completely belied by the evidence of the 1990s. Uh, but we've talked, uh, we were speaking a little bit during the break, and you said we were both saying the Obama administration, for as well as they did messaging to get elected, they are doing less well managing their messages now, and this is clearly part of it. I think they've found that governing is a lot harder than campaigning. And uh, uh, when, the, when you're governing, you're facing Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, you're facing uh, a lot of unexpected events that you must address, uh, the BP oil spill being an example, and it's much harder to control the message than when you're campaigning, and I think they've found that out, and although I do think they could do better on the economic messaging than they've done. All right, Roger, it's hard to have you here and not talk a little bit of business. I mean, obviously you founded Evercore, you're Blackstone alum, Lehman alum. What do you see as the financial landscape right now, especially as far as your specialty, M&A? We've seen a lot of P.E. activity pick up. We see M&A activity picking up. So even though this larger picture, this backdrop seems somewhat gloomy, do you feel like there is a pickup? Is the outlook brighter for Wall Street? Well, the outlook is brighter for the businesses uh, that we're fortunate enough to be in. Uh, and I think in general, it's somewhat brighter for all of Wall Street. There is. Uh, a modest recovery, but a steady one, going on in terms of global M&A. The, the data is clear about that. The volumes are higher, uh, and uh, I believe that will continue to pro to progress because M&A tends to go in these long cycles, five to seven year up cycles, two to three year down cycles. I think we're in the second year of a long term up cycle, and we'll see continued higher volumes, although only moderately. And then uh, uh, I think. As you said, to PE, other other transactional uh, or large transactional activities will improve. Is the U.S. still the place to be? We did a poll, a Bloomberg exclusive poll, that showed the U.S. as sort of fourth uh, runner-up almost for the top place, three places to invest. And I know Evercore just made a sizable investment in a Brazilian investment bank. Is the growth elsewhere right now? Well, the, the biggest. Uh, uh, GDP growth, I, I think most people feel, is going to be in the big emerging markets led by China, India, and Brazil. Uh, just given the wh where those uh, uh, countries are in terms of income per capita and GDP potential and so forth, and they have a uh, higher absolute growth over the medium term than the mature economies of the United States, Europe, Japan, and so forth. Uh, nevertheless, I still think the United States is the world center of entrepreneurship, of innovation, of technology. Uh, and I, I do not buy into the idea right. that our best days are behind us. Absolutely not. All right. We still deserve a medal after all. Thank you very much, Roger Altman, joining us there, the co-chairman of Evercore Partners, former deputy treasury secretary under Bill Clinton.